Welcome to the Gospel Truth Worship Hour. I'm Brother Alan Jackson bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing us yet to be on this the time side of life and have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. Now, as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation to the production staff for their diligent service to the gospel truth. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless them with those things that he knows that they're standing in need of. And I want to especially thank tonight uh, Sister Lauren Brown, who stepped up in the absence of Sister Pinnell. Uh, Lord willing, she'll be back. She went to her grandson's graduation. But Sister Brown has done this for us before, and we certainly do appreciate her willingness to step forward and help in the cause of Christianity. And I'm also praying on your behalf as observers and participant observers that uh, God will continue to bless you and your family members with those things that he knows that you're standing in need of. And I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer. And it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And so this evening, the Gospel Truth Worship Hour would like to continue to make you aware of the fact that there comes a time when people may come to you with a need and you may not be able to assist them. Don't feel bad. But what you can do is you can give them information and referral service so they can get what they need. And that is 211. If you instruct them to call 211, when the operator comes on, basically state what it is that they need, and they will be directed to the source that will eliminate that need. So once again, 211. And then, of course, the Gospel Truth Worship Hour wants you to be aware of the fact that we know the economy is rebounding and people are going back to work, and that's good. But we also know that there are still a number of people who are unemployed. So as a resource for you to assist you with your job search, we encourage you to go to eastbayworks.org. And once you go to eastbayworks.org, then you can bring up the one-stop career center that is nearest to you. There you can go out and find yourself in a world of jobs. You can get assistance with your resume. They can critique your resume. There are mock interviews, and they have telephones, and fax machines, and computers, and all those things that will help you to become gainfully employed. So remember, that's eastbayworks.org, and then you'll bring up the one-stop career center that is nearest to you. And the Gospel Truth wants you to be mindful of the fact that you can also view the Gospel Truth over YouTube. And you can do it one of two ways. You can go to YouTube and bring up Eddie Cam 1 and then bring up the Gospel Truth. Or you can go to YouTube and bring up the Gospel Truth with Alan Jackson. And then you can peruse the various programs that are there. Not all of them are me speaking because we've had a number of ministers and we're going to be bringing even more. So they're all there uh, bringing to you God's holy and divine word. Also, I want to continue to extend to you in the viewing audience a very warm and cordial invitation from the leadership and the entire congregation that you might come out and worship with us and study what thus saith the Lord. We're located at 3354 San Pablo Avenue here in the city of Oakland. Sunday morning worship begins at 930 with Bible study. Then at 11 o'clock we move into our morning worship. Sunday evening, we also have the Gospel Truth Worship Hour. All right, so of course you're encouraged to come out and be with us. Then on Wednesday at 11 o'clock, we have an adult Bible class. And then again, on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., we have Bible classes for all ages. So remember, come by and study with us what thus saith the Lord. All right, so tonight we will be doing the... Uh, Prayer list. So we're going to uh, ask the congregation to sing for us in the background Sweet Hour of Prayer as we present the prayer list. All right, so now without any further remarks, the prayer list. I'd like to start off by calling the name of Sister Alberta Jean Anderson and the Jacksons, Alan IV, Titus, Brittany, and Alvante, Allison and Tony Eastman, 
Dr. Janice Marshburn, Mr. and Mrs. Luckett, Teresa Hudson and family, Elaine Pinnell. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Lorise Williams and Sister Gertrude Tolliver, the Stevensons, Jesse Jr., Sylvester, and Dicey, Jesse Clark, Jessica, Sylvester Jr., Anika, Elijah Lewis, and Josiah. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Mary Marshall and Sister Mildred Perkins. We're praying on behalf of Brother Alan Frazier and Sister Bertha Reed, Sister Christine Aubrey, and also Sister Maria Wilson. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Ethel Jackson and Sister Nettie Hamilton, Sister Roberta Hayward, Brother Lewis and Brother James Williams, Brother Wilbur Jordan, Pastor Black. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Helen Yancey and Sister Esther Gabriel. We're praying on behalf of Mr. Herbert Lester and Mr. Eric Mitchell, Brother Johnny Carson and family, Sister Dorothy Lofton. We're praying also on behalf of Sister Margaret Belden, Pelton and Mrs. Edie Parker. The Marks family, uh, Ida B. Rockwell, Brother Eugene Williams, Sister Tommy Germany, Sister Ethel Gary, and we're also praying on behalf of Trina Josie and family, Brother Ron Thrower and family. We're praying also on behalf of Brother Keith L. Carson and family, Brother Frank Davis, Mr. Robert Bryant, and also Mrs. Jones, Brianna Shams. We're praying on behalf of uh, Al and Wendy Cummings and Norma Coker. Dave and St. Abraham, Sister Mary and Des Harrison, and the Bellamy family. We're also praying on behalf of Dolly, uh, Michael, and Kip Andrew, Sister Marilyn Pauly, and family. Sister Shante Wilson, Ronald and Francis, Sister Hannah Mae Parker, and also Mrs. Anna L. Moore, Mr. Gaylord Kelly, and family, Sister Crystal Yu. We're also praying on behalf of Marvin Dykus and Maddie Williams. Sister Malachi, excuse me, that's Malachi Ewell, Amber and Amani, Antoinette and Alex. We're praying also on behalf of Sister Betty Lou Wright, Sister Mary Jo A.H. Carson, uh, Sister Yvonne Johnson, and Sister Patricia Benjamin, Sister Lucille Cox, Dr. Stephanie Pennell Phillips and family, Ms. Nicole Mosley, also Sister Davina Watson and Sister Mary Johnson, Sister Thelma Harris, Trey Stewart. We're praying on behalf of Joe Jackson Sr. and Joe Jackson Jr., Sister Idell Hearns, and also Brother Woodrow Russell, Sister Pearl Evans, Grace Ewell, Zimmy Champion, and Brother Isidore Davis. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Teresa Bozeman, Sister Linda Green and family, Sister Edwina, Sister Matilda Dunn. We're praying on behalf of Sister Annie Riley and family, Sister Shirley Burnell, Mr. Juan Fernando, and Mr. Enrique Vallejo, also Sister Teresa Wanzo, Michael Jones, Sister O'Dear, and we're also praying on behalf of Eddie Lankwood and family, Charles and Yolanda Stewart, Moselle Lester, and we're also praying on behalf of Sister Yvonne Hutchins French and Sister Ruby Clifton, Brother Hawkins, Brother Adams, Sister Regina Gilmore, and Freddie and Sister Mims. Sister Sterlock. We're also praying on behalf of Edward Kelly, the Flowers family, Annie B. McGowan, Cynthia Blackshire, John and Monique Deary, Damon and Darnell Timms, Ruthie Blackshire, family and friends, Sister Nikki Sinclair, Ryan and Natasha, Roy and Carmen, Sister Betty Wise, Sister Patricia Rhodes, Sister P Pearl Clay. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Connie Devac and Robin Cook, Sister Hazel Brown and Deborah Wade, Charles and Devane Stewart, Shawishi Monroe, Melody Parker. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Cynthia Baumgartner, Mr. Morris Jackson and Sister Della Gupton, Sister Gwen Fight and also the Wanda McCree family, Sister Nelda O'Neill, Sister Alice Richardson and Mr. Arthur Polk. And at this time, we also want to be mindful of the bereaved families. We're praying on behalf of the Joycelyn Harris family. We're also praying on behalf of the David Glover family and also the Ronnie Luster family. And it's our prayer, of course, that God will comfort them during this time of their bereavement, that he will give them the strength to accept his will and the courage to carry on. We certainly would like to express our appreciation to the congregation for singing in the background, Sweet Hour of Prayer. And so this evening, 
I would like to invite your attention to the book of Matthew, uh, the 17th chapter. And we will look at just a few verses and then we will talk about this particular event. And the Bible says, beginning with verse number 5, While he yet spake, behold, the bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Now, it is from this 17th chapter of the book of Matthew that we want to look at a lesson that's known as the transfiguration of Jesus. In other words, this is talking about a change that happened when Jesus was yet living on this time side of life. And so on this occasion, we see that Jesus had selected his most trusted, or I won't say trusted, but servants that he really admired and those that he uh, put in his trust. And he, we like to call them his inner circle. They were Peter, James, and John. And so on this particular occasion, the Bible says, and after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, and his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart to pray. And so here is an illustration of the transfiguration, a change in the appearance of Jesus. Now, Jesus was transformed from the flesh to the spirit. And then also on this occasion, two of the great leaders of the past, both Moses and Elijah, appeared also in the spirit. And then all of this was done on this particular occasion to teach Peter, James, and John a very valuable lesson. And we also may learn these lessons. Now, once again, the setting. Jesus gathers Peter, James, and John and says, come on, you're going to go with me. Now, you can imagine how this must have felt being selected by Jesus to go on this little special mission. And, and, and as a result of that, Peter, he was just outdone because it was great. This was truly a special day in the life of Peter. Now, it was special for all of them, Peter, James, and John, because they played a major role in the early church. They preached on the day of Pentecost. And remember, Peter and John, when they went in to the temple, they were at the beautiful gate, and, and, and a man was asking alms, and they said, silver and gold we don't have, but such as I do have, rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. So they were very instrumental in the uh, early church. Now, the Bible says that they went up into a high mountain where they could be to themselves. And so, the Bible doesn't tell us which mountain it was. There are various people who said it was Mount Tabor or other mountains. But the mountain is not important. That's not our concern. What we want to look at is what happened on the mountain. And Jesus is our concern. And so as we look at what happened on the mountain, uh, we see that this was uh, a very uh, special occasion. It was a special event. The Bible says Jesus was transfigured, or he was changed. Now we're going to look at this here and see exactly how he was changed, but what we want to recognize is that he was changed before his apostles, Peter, James, and John. And then, also on this occasion, uh, there appeared also in the spirit Moses and Elijah. Now the Bible says that Jesus' face did shine like the sun, and that his raiment was white as the light. So this change occurred, and, and again, remember now, Peter, he, he, he was always one to uh, express his opinion, especially uh, when he saw something 
or he, he you know, Peter, impetuous one. He, he's the same one that when, when, when Jesus was walking on the sea and, and they became fearful and were afraid and cried out for fear. And Jesus said, hey, be not afraid, it's I. And then, you know, Peter said, well, Lord, if it's you, then let me come and walk on the water with you. And Jesus said, well, come on. Well, this is the same Peter, the same Peter who, when Jesus asked his, his inner circle, whom do you say that I am? It was Peter who said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And, and, and then we recognize that on this occasion that, that Peter, again, he was elated. He was delighted to be in the presence of the Lord and the presence of this greatness because these two individuals represented the law and the prophet. And we need to understand that, that Peter, oh, he, he said, look, it's so good for us to, he, and that's what his word is, it's good for us to be here. And so as he came to drift with that fact that this was a memorial, a memorial a, a, an occasion in which he would always be able to tell his friends and relatives about what happened on the mountain when Jesus was transfigured. So, Peter again, being impetuous, he said, look, I got an idea. I have a proposal. Let me tell you, you see, Lord and, and Moses and Elias, you know what? I think that we ought to build three tabernacles, one for you, Jesus, one for you, Moses, and one for Elias. Well, you see, sometimes uh, good intentions kind of get us in trouble because when he said this, uh-huh, the God of heaven spoke out, no, 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 no. I don't want to have any part in this. He said, but let me tell you what it's really all about. And the Bible says that after making uh, this suggestion that there be three tabernacles, the Bible says that a bright cloud overshadowed them. And then, once again, we find the apostles falling on their faces. And that voice out of heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Right. Hear ye him. All right? So, so Peter, you know, we, we can't knock him for his good intentions. He, he, he wanted to, uh, to uh, recognize and honor these three great men equally. But the Lord had to let him know that he had a son on whom he was well pleased, and that's who you were to hear. All right. Now, we also see that, you know, sometimes you go to church, and when the preacher's up preaching, and he's gone and gone, and everybody's liking somebody say, make it plain, preacher. No doubt you heard that, right? Well, God made it plain. All right. He made it plain as to who was to be heard, all right? Uh, Peter thought it was good to be present. He wanted to make a tabernacle for all three. He wanted to, uh, to, to honor them equally. But God said, no, this is not the way it is. And the voice of heaven spoke. And they fell on their face. And again, they were afraid. Right? That's not the first time the apostles were afraid. Uh, when, when they saw Jesus walking on the water, the Bible says they cried out for fear. He had to let them know, have no fear, it's I. All right? But these things happen. I, I, I guess uh, in hindsight now as I look in the scriptures and see how could they have been afraid of Jesus? But I wasn't there then. But now I understand through faith that when Jesus is with you, when Jesus is on board, you don't have anything to worry about. I don't care how much shaking going on. I don't care how many storms are raging. As long as Jesus is on board, right. you're in good company. All right? And so, as Jesus did before, he went to those apostles and he touched them. And he said, be not afraid. And he got up. They got up. And when they got up, this time they looked around. It was just Jesus standing right. there all alone. So Moses and Elias had made their appearance, but now they were gone. And as a result of them making their appearance, we learned something from this, and that is that man never dies. All right? We are all going to leave this earth one day, but we're not going to die. Now, now, now these old bodies. 
bodies, okay? These old bodies are not going to go with, with us here. If you will, let's go over to the book of uh, 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 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And over in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, we can see what's going to happen to these bodies, verses number 52 and 53. But let me just give this illustration. You know, we send up astronauts out of space. And, and when they're uh, uh, going on up there, that, uh, that rocket that they have, that capsule that they are in, is enclosed or encased with heat shields. And what are they for? To keep it from burning up when it leaves the atmosphere or when it returns. Well, the same principle applies to these bodies. These bodies can't take that heat. All right, so what the Bible says, in a moment, this is 1 Corinthians 15 and 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So we all are going to be changed. The Bible says, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when we put on immortality here, then we'll be able to make that journey from earth to glory, all right? So now, the point I'm trying to get you to understand tonight is that the Lord is expecting all of us to change, all right? Uh, when, when, when Jesus uh, went to his apostles and they looked up uh, and saw him and then Jesus instructed, he says, now I don't want you to tell anybody about this, anybody about this until after the resurrection, all right? So now, what lessons, Peter and John and James, what, what, what lessons were they able to see? First of all, they were able to see that Jesus was both physical and spiritual. And he changed his physical being into a spiritual being right before their very eyes. All right? And then we also, as I stated they learned that man never dies. They looked up and saw Moses and Elias. So man never dies. We need to understand that. And then we found that they understood because God made it plain to them who they were supposed to hear. God said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. Now understand this. Now if there was ever a time in which uh, we could be considered uh, uh, the possibility of maybe having three different churches or three different organizations that would grant us salvation. God negated that. And if it was going to be, this would have been the time. It would have been an opportunity for Moses to have a church and Elias to have a church and Jesus to have a church. Well, God said, no, no, no. So, so this is what we understand from this is that Jesus is all powerful, he's over everything, and he is the only one that God wants us to hear. And God said so. Christ is greater than all others. And he wants man to hear Christ. And then Jesus told his apostles, be not afraid. He doesn't want us to be afraid. All right? If you trust him, he'll bring you out regardless of what the situation is, as long as you maintain your faith in him. Peter's testimony, what, what happened as a result of this experience, all right? As, as a result of this experience, he was greatly impressed with what he saw, all right? And, and I'm sure that we all would have been impressed if we were uh, eyewitnesses of this event, and that's what he was, an eyewitness of this event. He was able to say that God spoke his approval of his son. Okay? And then uh, he understood as a result of this experience that Christ is the one to be heard. So if you're listening to anybody else, okay, and when I say that, you know, there are a number of folk. I can start from A and go on down to Z, but I'm not going to do that. My suggestion to you is you need to check and see if you are a part of the church that had its beginning in AD 33. And if you are not, then you're involved with something that started too late, and Jesus is not the head, all right? It's later than you think, all right? 
Uh, somebody might say, well, you know, I go to church and uh, we sing and we pray and uh, we do all the things that you do. Well, the only thing I can say to you is the church that I'm a member of, I can find it in this book. But the one that you're a member of, it had a man or a woman as its beginning or its head. Understand, Jesus is the way. That's why God spoke and said, no, I don't need one for Moses. I don't need one for Elias. I just need my son. All right? And he established his church. And he made it possible that we could all be one in him, in the church. All right? And then Peter realized that, that the endorsement of Jesus came from heaven. He heard the voice from heaven speaking and saying, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. Now the Lord wants us to be transfigured or changed. And this can be brought about a change. We can experience a change as a result of our obedience to Jesus Christ. Amen. And as a result of that, we can become new creatures in Christ Jesus. We can change from a bad life to a good life. The transfiguration of the last day, the Bible says we will be changed. Remember, I just told you that this mortality has to take on immortality. So we're going to be changed. I trust that you will get your mind changed before it's everlasting and eternally too late. We will be changed from the physical to the spiritual. And then finally, in my conclusion, I'm hoping tonight that you will allow this to become a turning point in your life. Uh, uh, it's later than you think. You need to ask yourself, am I following the Lord? Am I giving the Lord any time? Because one day you're going to have to answer to him for the things that you've done in the body, whether they be good or bad. And then you need to hear Jesus Christ obey him and let him change you for the better. You can get into the Lord's church that was established on the day of Pentecost by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. And when you come to the Lord's body and you're at it, you'll become a new creature in Christ Jesus. You will have the opportunity to live and work in the kingdom of the Lord. And then if you live faithful until life's end, you will hear the master say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come to the Lord by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. By doing those things, the Lord will add you to his body, which is his church. I am Brother Jackson inviting you to join us again next week if it's God's will. When the Gospel Truth Worship Hour will once again come your way, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word. Until then, it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe. Thank you.